Bros, welcoming you back to Crypto's Juiciest News. The Bitcoin monthly candle has once again returned green. Yes, we love a good, nice, thick, green, juicy candle for the month. It's okay if it finishes red, though, because it's small red. That's all we really care about. Now, the FOMC is coming out in about 18 to 20 hours, and we are expecting the US Fed to cut. Well, it's about two-thirds chance that it's going to be a 50 basis point cut and the other one's 25 just to catch you up on the narrative going on not that it really matters but the narrative is that they might have to cut by 50 because if they did 25 the next one has to be 50 and then people are going to panic next time so as you can see people are just doing mental gymnastics going around bitcoin's price friends around sixty thousand dollars if we check out the weekly super trend it is still nice and green it is around this 21 EMA. Like, we really need to close above this and finally be done for good. That would be great. I mean, look how many fake outs there were, friends. I just want to tell you, every indicator has its flaws. So even if you're using this, you know, this 21 EMA on the weekly, just to show you, right, this 21 EMA on the weekly chart, if you go back to 2016 cycle, this was a God T cycle. Look at that. Every time I pulled back to the 21 EMA, you buy. You buy, you buy, you buy, you buy. Every time I pull back to so the 21 EMA is the, the yellow dotted line. And every time that happened, it was basically uh, free money, okay? Every time it went up until the very, very end. But now, we don't have that now, do we, friends? Now we don't have that. Now we went up, we touched the 21 EMA, and then we crashed back below. Do you remember this? And then we went back up. This was Trump stuff. Maybe Trump stuff was here. And then we crashed back below. This was the Japan Pokemon Island stuff. You see that? And we come back up. Now we actually crash back down a low again, like three, four waves, man. It's, it's, it's nasty, isn't it? But I'm just showing you the importance of respecting the pump because that's trading indicators, man. You don't get your 50-50. You got to use other things of confluence out here. And if you want to do leverage trading, I mean, like, just don't, don't do it. 99% look, people are going to lose. That's it. You can't, you, you, can't, you can't cheat the stats, okay? Someone's going to lose. It's all PVP. Now, if we're actually speaking about PVP, it feels like Ethereum is PVP right now because Ethereum, friends, is still at a dog shit 2345. That's actually poopy. Very, very, very poopy right now. Ethereum needs to go move its, up, move, it, move its way up. Uh, the Bitcoin dominance is like 58, 59%. Maybe it goes to 60. I mean, who the hell cares? I mean, you, you, up here, you're playing with fire. You're playing with fire. But it's funny, friends. I just, as Bitcoin dominance, look, I'll just show you again. As Bitcoin dominance, is going up higher, okay? Bitcoin maxis are getting more convicted. You see, that's that's everyone's everyone gets that trap right. As your thing goes up more and more and more and more, people feel that they're right even more. They don't think, oh, we're expensive. They don't think, uh oh, I'm entering the zone of being wrong more if I keep holding. No one thinks like that. Because as things go up, we want them to continue going up, so we cheer them. And when things go down, we don't say, oh, if I hold here, I'm more correct for holding here. In investing, right, people's mentality switches. People don't think like that. But the great investors do think like that. If you have a good company or even a good crypto with a strong community, the lower it goes, yes, uh, holding becomes even more of a correct thing to do. But when it comes to holding, I guess ETH BTC has been showing poopy times for a long time. And this is disgusting, man. This is like an eight-year round trip, friends. This is really, really, really nasty. Like, uh, just remember this for Euphoria, man. If Vitalik's coin had to round trip eight years, what else hope does anything else have, right? That's, just, that's the important part to think about. Now, on the others BTC chart, friends, it's actually still shocking. This is, yeah, I am just hate to, hate to admit it again. It is the worst alt season of all time, worst altcoin performance, lowest performance, worst against Bitcoin, worst USD, worst everything, just bad everywhere, okay? It is what it is, okay? We can't do anything about it. You just got to continue to hold. Like, it's not about being, look, if you compare, this is, you know, friends, if was, when, you know, let's, let's say somebody has low self-esteem and they're really upset that everyone else is richer than them and sexier than them and they're more successful how would you guide that person mentally? You wouldn't tell them, hey, hey, look at that person. They're better than you. You'd say, hey, compare yourself to last year. Compare yourself with yourself. You know, maybe you want to lose some weight. Maybe you're like 100 kilos, 220 pounds. Maybe you just want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, that's your first step. That's your point of reference. 
It's not like looking at like some shredded guy who's on the gear 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not about that. You compare yourself with yourself. Now, here's the thing. In markets, when you compare yourself to yourself, you end up in a world of trouble because our growth rates are slowing down. So if you compare crypto's growth rates now to the 2020 cycle and the 2016 and the 2012 cycle, it's getting worse every time. It's getting lower and lower and lower. So we actually do have to compare to other other market indexes in, in, in crypto. So the stock market, S&P 500 is giving you about 8% per year. It's about 10%. You get a 1.5% dividend yield. So it's 8 to 10%. But altcoins have been growing at 55 for the past five years. So in the next five years, maybe stocks continues to do 10. Crypto, even if it, it's going to slow down, right? Even if it only does 40, this is for altcoins, by the way, because Bitcoin is already around 40. You see, those numbers are still huge. In fact, we don't even have to think about stocks until crypto is, is growing at like 15% per year. That, we've got a long way to go for that. But for now... We take day by day. This is the FOMC meeting. These are the bars here. You can see the odds here, friends. 25 basis point cut, 37% chance. And the other one is 63%. We're going to have to wait. It's not, it's not just about that decision. It's about what the market does. So what actually was nice is the market's selling off into it. That's like the fake move. Then it reverses out. Because you want the strong move. The, the, the weak hands do the first move a lot of the times. And then the strong hands take it up after them, right? Because the weak hands will sell because they might be like, ah, oh, crap, everything's bearish. And then the market, the wisdom of the market can, can uh, punch it back up later. Now, as far as uh, market expansions go, this is the, once again, Mr. Russell 2000, still hovering around here, he needs to break that 219. Remember, once again, we need this to go to all-time highs. That is the final key uh, piece of the puzzle, the missing piece for macro markets. That's the, that's the final thing that needs to go for us to get our, our amazing altcoin run, if you will. And the poly market... Odds, friends, for the U.S. president is 48% Trump, 50% Kamala Krappis. That's right. We are single-issue believers. Screw everybody else, dude. I want our crypto bags to pump. I don't give a shit about anything else. Go, go stuff yourselves. I know everyone's lying. Everyone's psyopsing. I don't give a crap, okay? Just tell me crypto is good. Tell everyone else crypto is good. That's what we want, friends. I wanted to give you an important message about holding through FUD, friends. This is... Landwolf. See this arrow down here? This is the official 615 Landwolf. It sold down here to 1 million market cap. So there was, so right now, so what happened was we saw harmful FUD from another influencer and they maliciously claimed that Landwolf was migrating over to Tron. And we just dumped down. Everyone believed it. Not everyone, just there's always a few soy boys. They believe that junk. So it turns out it was just a parasite vampire attack. And the market responded with a muscular 232% recovery. See this? Zip, 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 zip. You see that, friends? Now, here's the thing, man, okay? We're all still believing. You can't control this stuff. I've seen this in every single coin, friends. Coins go down, bad stuff happens. Dev gets sick. Dev has to take a holiday. Dev has to do whatever it is, okay? Dev or community or something happens. It's always on these bad candles, man. I don't know why. This, it's like this weird phenomenon. Right, the red, it's like our emotions, friends, where they, they go down and up. It's just, it's crazy how these cycles work. So you got to remember as well, the macro conditions, Ethereum is copping the most fud of all. Ethereum's that, remember, you got billions of dollars of people believe in Ethereum, not just like, hey, we're a meme coin, we won't make it, you know what I mean? So Ethereum, friends, it's still like two, three fifty. It Like, that is horror show, bro. You, like, I was talking about we need to get above 4,000. We're close to 2,000 now. You're like, okay, we're now further away from that. But at least you know there are like catalyst indicators that you're waiting for. Obviously, I love making this, these, these pictures and images. Friends, this is Michael Saylor. Which pill do you choose? They're both land wolves. Of course. Now, there are 15 vampire attacks out here. But I'm just it's giving you a lesson, friends. Also, shout out to my friend Dean. Dean Kendall. Hi, Sami. What about Mojo on Ethereum? Yes, sir. I am. I replied to him as well. I'm still holding. Haven't sold. Uh, I'm just, you, see, friends, you don't know who's going to wake up the most. But you, you need the catalyst first. So it's it's fully guessing. It, it's like a, it's totally guessing, right? Um, you just we're waiting for that catalyst. What is it? Ethereum 4K plus. Just I'm just saying these numbers, friends. You don't know, man. If you knew the number, if you knew the exact condition and the number, then as soon as it happens, you just go turbo long leverage. It's, it's not that easy. But you, you just you put these uh, marks out here just to like, you know, just to track yourself to stay in the game. 
Now, friends, all the altcoins everywhere, they're trying to make a base, trying to make a bottom, uh, some sort of bottoming structure. I think the most important thing is perhaps just the total crypto index. This is total crypto. It's at 2 trillion. Uh, it's probably just, it's got to work its way out of here. Hopefully, this is some sort of bottom for it. Remember, this includes Bitcoin and stable coins. Hopefully, it's just, it's got to go back in here and then it's got to start doing the zippity do that move up. But obviously, on the nice plus news, Pulse Chain ecosystem has had green again. This is nice. So you have Hex, the superior store of value at 16, 17%, and Hex on Ethereum at 11%. Then you have Pulse Chain, the better Ethereum, and PulseX, the better than Unisoy. And then Incentive Token, the greenest logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's my talking point. That's my marketing point for it. It's just it's got the greenest logo. And look, man, trust me, it's really, really, really green. It is a freaking green logo, isn't it? That's it. That's all you need. Now, it's nice to see them green. There was some FUD news that came out. Okay, so FUD news. So somewhere in Finland, basically like the, their Daily Mail equivalent did like this old news article thing, basically saying that um, it was some tax evasion thing on Richard Hart. It was just it's a bunch of bullshit. Who cares at this point, bro? Like there's nothing that killed the community at this point. Like it's just the first I look, I, I, I generally, I promise, I, I just, I had a glance at it and I started yawning. I promise you, I started yawning. I, I'm actually was like, I just can't be, I can't be bothered with this shit anymore. You guys are just all, just go, go stuff yourselves. All right, yeah, that's what I was basically saying. Now, Richard responded. He says, Wikipedia deleted the girl man amnesia effect article. The phenomenon of a person trusting newspapers for topics which that person is not knowledgeable about, despite recognizing the newspaper as being extremely inaccurate on certain topics, which that person is knowledgeable about. So it's actually nice for him to say, but that's his basically saying. He's like, look, you know it's a bunch of bullshit, and there is an actual effect when you see something in an article. Ah, it may mean something. It's important to just think about that. Now, he also responds, I'm doing great and will continue to do great, no matter how many people attack me or whom they work for. Hex was hated and gatekept for all the way to 1 million percent gains. You can't stop an idea whose time has come. Truly decentralized systems are here and they're never going away ever. So if you want to know, friends, the real numbers, right? So Hex, it's, see, no one knew that this correct calculation, but at the bottom of Hex's uh, all-time low, it was 5 million market cap. So... It was actually surprising, right? Because you'd probably think if it's something did 10,000x, you'd probably think it was like a 50k market cap coin. No, 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 it was actually 5 million. And then when it did the first 10x, now it's up to 50 million. And then it was 500 million. Can you believe it, friends? At 500 million market cap in 2020, Hex still did another 100x. So exactly four years where we are today, Hex was 500 million market cap. That That's enormous. That That's... That's mind blowing when you think about it like that. Because you know all these meme coins and everything. It went from 500 million to 50 billion. That's what its peak was. And how do you do that? You do roughly 90 to 100 billion circulating coins. You know, it's just a rough estimate. Okay. So I think Richard responded well in the tweets. The newspaper also got sued for defamation by a detective. So yeah, I think I saw shout out to Money Game Cryptos are covering that as well. So I mean, like, no one gives a shit at this point, man. We just want to see the green candles. And now I've got the price charts here for you, baby dolls. This is, remember, they're all linked. I get it, I get it. This is weekly chart for PLS. Uh, we need this to, we like need this to flip. Like, if you're wondering, hey, when is it actually, like when is it right around the corner we're going up? Firstly, it could be happening right now. It's just slow. So this could be bottom. It probably could have been already bottom. Okay, it's a bottom zone, friends. But the actual friendship begins once you flip green on the super trend. So that is... Uh, 0.59 day one sack. So it is here. Once you, one, If it closes a week above here, it flips green. You notice what it did back here? The weekly super trend was here. We pumped up and there you go. You had this big mania, January, February, March, and the altcoins. Unfortunately, it was short-lived, right? So if that happens again, that's what, that's what we need. Um, also, friends, uh, sometimes one in a hundred comments creep in. And I, I get it. I completely empathize with you. People ask me, what happened to the meme coins? What happened to the old coins? What, why aren't you covering it, Sammy? And I'm like, I've got to re respond to you because I know, friends, these people, the coins go down, they disappear for three weeks, they don't want to look at their phones, and then they come back and, uh, and demand everything. So just so you know, everything in crypto is correlated. Ethereum is 2,300. That is a dog shit scam level. Don't ask me any questions about altcoins until Ethereum is above 4,000. That's it. Once the team is above 4,000, now we can start thinking about, hey, are these things cheap or whatever? By the way, they're all cheap. I just, friends, I'm just telling you now, 
I barely got enough energy to cover things in green candles, uh, to cover cover things when they're going down. The last thing I want to do is go through like 100 plus coins, ones that you already know, and go, wow, this is cheap, and this is cheap, and this is cheap, and this is like all day. Like, they're all cheap, right? Everything's cheap. You know what I'm saying? When Ethereum's 2300, everything's cheap. That's it. Literally, everything's cheap, unless, you, unless you're buying them, smashing through the highs. Okay? So, that's how you have to think about it. Now, not absolutely everything, everything is cheap, but you get the point, okay? So... Uh, that's most importantly. And Pulse itself is cheap. So now everything on the Pulse train ecosystem is like double cheap. But double cheap also means double dog shit prices. It's nice that PulseX as well made this little high low. You can't even see it here. You can see it on the log chart. It's making this high low floor. That could be the buy and burn working. I think it's done like 4.88% in the background. But the, the volume has slowed down a lot. That's, that's a disappointing thing. But uh, that's all a mark crypto, right? This is Hex as well, friends. So Hex. Fans, I'm telling you right now, dude, remember my law of meme coins, law of altcoins, law of crypto. Anything less than a dollar, just cheer it to a dollar, man. Just cheer it. P-hex and E-hex to a dollar. Um, yeah, people don't believe it now, but if I make Ethereum 8,400, okay, you're going to start to believe it. Also funny, I just scrolled down here, baby dolls. Icosa, which is slingshot leverage on Hex, it's up like 24%. Same as Hedron as well. I've just made a post on it now, nice and green. So this is it. Big, 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 nice and green. I love seeing these big green texts. I like thick and green. Now, remember, everything is correlated, but they're correlated in different ways. The low, obviously, what's the, what's, the, what's the thickest correlation and slowest volatility? It's Bitcoin and Ethereum relative to crypto. And then you have Pulse which is next to that because it's like alternative layer one. It's a better Ethereum, right? And you also have around Pulse. You have PulseX, Inc. because of the bonding. You have Hex, EHEX, PHEX. They're all together, friends. So the first meme coin. So let's say you are a, that's why, look, if you're a Hex Maxi, you're a Richard Hart Maxi, I think it's it's very obvious if you're going to experiment, you want to play lottery tickets like, man, I've got an itchy finger, people making gains. Icosa is the coin for you. Icosa Hedron. Okay, probably Icosa, friends, because it has less inflation. But Icosa, that is a hex expansion pack. It's literally an expansion pack of hex. So you've got an expansion pack of the core, and it's literally di directly related to hex. Okay, so I know everyone just, I have to explain it 15,000 times. Don't worry about it, man. It's leverage on hex. As you can see, hex goes up like 5%, 10%. This thing's up 23%. You see that? And it's doing a nice round the bottom. So I coach the slingshot leverage on Hex, much of a slaughter. It's like the first step out. Okay. And you get to see, right, as soon as Hex is up, I coach the smashes up. But there's a limit, right? Because Hex is bigger. I coach, so there's a limit to that. You still get great gains. It's still, it's still amazing, right, that you can identify it, that we're here with kindness and friendship. But what about other ones out here? So there are other ones that will probably, that could fly, not probably, but could fly, Way higher than Icosa, and they are all the Pulse Chain altcoins. The thing is, though, you can't, you don't go up immediately when the speed goes up in one day. You don't. It, it's more you need the sentiment to shift. But once it shifts, like it's it's literally an explosive time. This is Pika on Pulse Chain, friends. And what I'm gonna do right now, of course, I'm gonna play for you some nice Pika music. Moo. Okay, so. Here is a Pika pulse ratio. Okay, this is Pika pulse. Whee! Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, there's a risk curve, right? It's just like friends. If the stock market's up, everyone just looks for Bitcoin to go up straight away, one for one. That's your risk. Okay, but then it takes a bit more time as Ethereum go up, and then it takes even longer time. Ethereum's got to be maybe above three k, four k. Now Pulse Chain starts doing its big move, right? And then when Pulse Chain does its daily move, it drags up Hex. Icosa is moving one for one with it, and then it has a leverage on it, right? It has a leverage. But then after all that sentiment is cleared, we have the extreme friendship part, which is like, you know, the dick with Bart, the Pete eyes, and all these other things on average, right? And everything. There's the individual ones that move. But that's pretty much it, friends. But you gotta you gotta think about like you're playing for the same move. You're 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 holding. So you don't actually have to buy and sell anything. You're you're still holding and doing nothing. It's just mentally, it's it's mentally it hurts to know that, this is for new people, to know that, okay, if Bitcoin does four to five red monthly candles, you're down 90% in whatever the coin it is you're in, and it's going to take like another year to come back. Because you can't access liquidity. There's not enough trading and stuff going around here when it comes to that. But if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin does five monthly candles, you can still sell it, right? And what's five red monthly candles in Bitcoin? 
Maybe it's like what it did almost this year, right? Maybe it's down 30%, okay? But the altcoins will be down like 90, 95. You see that? However, ultimately, you're here to make the most, right? So you're here to hold the whole way. It's just, it's easier said than done though, because now probably probably a lot of people are going to think twice about next year if you get Bitcoin 200K, because they're going to think, you know what? Yeah, technically I might have the best performing coins. The problem is it took me four years to get to this point and, a, and it was literally at a big loss for 3.5 years. I don't like that. So they're going to have stable coins. They're going to have more Bitcoin and Ethereum, okay? So what I'm helping you do is just outline the risk curve and I can quickly just draw it. Obviously, remember the risk curve here, friends, is what's the lowest risk you have down here? You have your Bitcoin coin here and then you have your ETH. And then you have your Pulse chain, right? Like your, all your other layer ones, okay? So L1. Then you have like, you know, your Pulse X, your Hex and stuff near it, right? They're like adding more risk. And then you have your Ink as well. And then as you go up here, you have your Icosa, right? And then even as you go to the extreme part of risk, is like everything else. Just write altcoins, like Pulse chain altcoins, okay? And obviously the top, top, top right, you, that's where you have your 50, 100x. Could be a 1,000x and stuff out here. However... You really got to believe even harder than everybody else because you can't access any liquidity until that end. That's why if you do a lottery ticket size, you win because you are controlling your risk. It's okay if something like you don't want it to drop 90%, but it's okay if it does because it doesn't take it doesn't take much to flip it back around. Check this out as well. This is an Aussie Peppy having a nice Fanta. Aussies wait for America to wake up and kickstart the show. That's what it comes down to, friends. If you're wondering, like, why is the market slow? It's, it's a FOMC. Okay, it's the FOMC. Now, I've I've tra friends, I've traded literally, I've traded an office where we were waiting like six whole days for the freaking FOMC. We're like, oh my gosh, hurry up. Nothing would move before. Everyone's just squaring off positions. And then after it comes out, it's like there's a new pivotal direction. Like all the big managers and stuff have an idea. Okay, where's the economy heading? Where's everything going? So that's what we're waiting for. Um, as well, friends, check this out. Michael Saylor, choose your feet. Do you want on the left, you have the better Bitcoin or on the right, you have the other better Bitcoin? So of course, Hex is a better Bitcoin, better store of value. That's what we're here for, friends. Um, that's, of course, that's what you're here for. Of course, it's a better store of value. Now, I made this very interesting post. And I wanted to share it with you because everyone's loving it, okay? On the Hex website, Richard Hart speaks about gold as a store of value. And, and in one of his posts, friends, so this is the obviously this is the Hex store of value, right? Time deposits are worth trillions. You have, so he speaks about gold, credit card companies. Now, Richard Hart himself spoke about gold. And gold's market cap, friends, is $16 trillion. So I said, when, when Hex flips gold, you're going to have a $141 Hex. <laughs> That's right. So it'll be fantastic to see when we get there. But you can't earn any yield on gold. You got to hand it out, right? You can, you can spin any market in the talking point. By the way, as soon as the green candles are flying, it's all over for them. It's literally all over. We already went through the polls and the surveys, friends, 55% of Zuma kids. So anybody between the ages of 11 and I think 27, around there, 55% of them literally want to manage finances on chain. They don't want to walk into a bank and use their website. They actually say their website's shit. They're right, opaque, not transparent, can't see anything, don't know what the hell's going on, too much garbage. They'd rather do it on chain. That's crazy, man. 55%. Dude, you don't even have pubes on your face yet and you're already wanting to handle your finances on chain. That's crazy. That's amazing. That's the future of crypto, friends. This is where the future is going. We are now. We are the future. So that trend is going to keep continuing. And they don't want to touch gold. That's it. So what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to like, look, you can argue with Peter Schiff. Uh, Peter Schiff, yes, Peter Schiff wins every debate. He wins every debate. But uh, I didn't care about word debates, bro. I care about, okay, what's my purchasing power of my action? That's what you care about. How many bottles of milk, A2 protein milk, mind you, not soy milk, of course. How many bottles of milk can you buy with your portfolio if you invested here versus here? That's what we're here for, the capital gain allocation. Now, I have to make a special mention to Gabriel Haynes, friend. So Gabby was one of the soldiers. He kept everyone around in crypto in the bear market 2022. Okay, it was literally, I'm not joking, it was basically just me and him. 
It was me tweeting for everyone to be bullish, and I had like literally three likes per comment. Not joking, no one was around. No one to look at it. I was getting called a scammer by the what? Well, like one out of three people appear, one calls me a scammer. Why? Because I was saying trading, don't trade, man. You'll lose, you'll lose, you'll lose. Eventually, you'll lose. And everyone's like, oh, when's eventually? So it's gonna go up in ten years. And it's crazy. Bitcoin's fifteen k then. You know, about, about twenty fifteen to twenty k now. Gabby is a federal bull investigator. <laughs> Make sure you long your longs, deploy your stable coins, riding the crypto bull into the sunset. You got to remember, friends, holding through to these bear market times, it's very re rewarding, okay? But they, they happen so fast, it, it, it hurts because the bear market goes for so long. It's almost like a dream. Like when you look at it, you're like, bro, bro did, did, did we actually go up for that long? No, we didn't, friends. Look. Look when altcoin mania was. You look at this whole chart. Dude, this is literally, look at this. Bear market starts here. Look at this. Dude, this is literally, oh my gosh, it's it's four years, dude, four years. This is Bitcoin going up. But when did altcoins actually move, friends? It was, there you go, March, April. That was it. Look at that window. I'm going to literally, I'm going to do this vertical line. I'm going to color this vertical line. Friends, that was literally it. And this was 60 days. Isn't that wild? But just... I know it adds a lot of stress to you, doesn't it? Like that is it. You, you sell here, by the way, you're wrecked. You sell here, you're wrecked because it kept going up without. You sell here, you're wrecked. This is when Elon Musk buys. If you sell when Elon Musk bought, you're wrecked. You had to sell in the final 60 days. And then as soon as it started getting exciting, it was moving, Richard Hart says, tops in. So maybe that happens again, friends. Maybe Richard calls the top. And then hopefully gets this one right. Hopefully maybe calls the top. And maybe Pulse Chain and Hex haven't peaked yet. And then we go down with the rest of the market. If you're interested, it is interesting to think about how, how low Hex dropped there before the big pump. And because you are my baby doll sprinkles, I'm actually going to show you that chart now. This is extremely important to know so you don't get fluttered out of your bags. Okay, so Hex, friends, where was China's scam dump? It was in May. It was, I think, here. All right, so actually, we'll go down to the daily chart, and we're actually going closer and closer because this is really important to know, really important. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen again, man, because this was Hex Cycle 1, okay? It was Hex's unicorn run. However, if we go to that May, look at this. Hex did, this is crazy, right? Hex does a 5X run, and then in the China scam May dump, it dumps 55%. But, like, you're still up from the top here. You're still up 50% from this top here. Okay, and then it actually goes up even more. It goes up another 10x. Okay, now I know everyone's going to do the fractal and we're going to cheer on the fractal, but I'm just showing you, yes, if Richard calls the top and he's selling, you'll be able to probably see it on chain. So that's something to think about. Or maybe he doesn't even want to think about selling a parabolic top because, friends, the, the market, it's not doing this parabolic shit anymore. It's doing, it's doing rounded things like a mature market. Like... Bitcoin is not getting as, look at this, Bitcoin pointy and then round, round. See, that's why nobody thought this was the end because it was double rounded, okay? There was no pointy top. And look at here, even more round. So look, I'm not even joking. What we might find at the end, friends, I'm not even kidding. We might find Bitcoin hovers at like 180 to 200K for like six months. And everyone's like, what the hell? How can this be the top? It's good going here forever. And then fake out, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I'm laughing now. That's going to be really, really, really painful because this is going to trap everybody if it does something like that. Markets tend to do these scam moves like that. I'm going to give a special shout out to Spectral Mana. This girl is awesome, friends. I thought she was AI because I had no idea she's actually real. She draws. I don't know what this thing is. This is like an Oculus thing. This is awesome. She actually drew a cute Pikachu. Wow, the, sh the tail. Look at the tail, friends. Okay, you got to play some mad, mad Pikachu music. Look how cute this is. This is so cool, man. So shout out to Spectral Mana. Thank you very much. She's part of the Pulse Chain community. She does a lot of Tangang drawing and stuff. It's just, it's amazing. Also, shout out to Mr. J Plush. This is amazing. We can't expect God to do all the work, picker to picker. This is amazing. So I'm going to have to repost this. And reposting is exactly what I just did right now, friends. It's actually beautiful. I love this Simpsons episode, hanging hang the shotgun. Step away from the tall grass and get inside this Pokeball. Get inside. We're going to win. Do you want to know what's funny, friends? Um, on Ethereum mainnet, Pika, 
So they they made a Pikachu coin back in Ethereum mainnet, but it didn't end up working out because I'm not jo- I'm literally not joking. It was literally they just that's you literally just called Pika and it went to 40 million market cap. Okay, you can actually look it up on CoinGecko. Just Pika and it had the little shittiest 2D sprite like crappy like you know like low quality resolution Pikachu logo in Telegram and everyone called the Pikachu coin. That's it. it went to 40 million market cap. And what they did was, because we didn't know back then in 2021, you got to understand how the games have changed. Back then, um, you needed to be, like, listed. So you needed them to respect any of, like, trademark properties, and people were scared that they were going to get sued because NFTs were going big, right? So what they were doing was uh, they they changed their Pika. They weren't even – they weren't – because there was no such thing as memes because what they had to do was, friend, they made a game. They started to make – they hired that a, a game company came in. They are trying to make a game. They made Pikachu fat. <laughs> he was a fat detective with a gun, and he had, like, he had like purple hair and stuff. They, they tried to change. It looked like a – I'll try to find it. I think I've got a bit of it right now. It's like it was here. See these, like, Pika. See this, like, they had a fat Pikachu. They made, they made a Pika swap. See, this is it. This is amazing, friends. Just so, just so you know how how altcoins have evolved. Because back then, meme coins, they were there's no such thing as meme coins. There was a community, and no one knew what to do with it. So they they stopped believing in the meme. And what they did was they they went from meme to utility, and and it became useless. This is all NFTs. This was all the altcoins. So what they did was they made like Pika swap. They made like a Uniswap for Pika. Like this was so popular. Every chain was just forking Uniswap. Every every altcoin was just forking Uniswap and making their own version. There was like Shiba Swap, a Pika Swap, or whatever. They also had NFT marketplaces. They're like, oh, people love NFTs. Let's make a JPEG thing. Let's, let's do that. But what they didn't know was they were just grabbing people for utility things, but you were always going to get outcompeted. You see? But you got to think around, think about which ones were the ones that survived back then. It's the ones who just kept the ideas and kept believing. You don't have to make anything like Floki. Or anything like that, okay? And Doge, I know Elon Musk likes Doge and everything, but you, you see what see what I mean? So they they went into the trap. They start saying, "Oh my gosh, we have all these people here. Let's go do something." Even Shiba Inu friends, they went and made the Shiba chain. You see, so once you look, you're just trying to get bigger. That's it. You're just infinitely trying to get bigger. That's what Bitcoin is. You're infinitely trying to get bigger. You're trying to up the game, up the hustle, up the promotion, up the up the shilling. That's what it is. You see, Bitcoin's now in like, let's shield to countries. Okay, the, the game always gets bigger. You don't need to make a utility. You, everyone should be learning from Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't add, it adds utility once every five years. Okay, it, do, it doesn't actually add anything. It's just people believe harder and harder as time goes on. So the longer you survive, people can believe, keep believing. But you need a community there, right? So that's why I want you to think about that when you see these, when you see the friendship between Pikachu and Picotaro. Okay, and pineapples and everything out here. It's all having fun, but it's permanent fun and friendship. So you, there is no end game of like, oh, let's go do an NFT marketplace. Let's go do this. No, 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 no. You're going to lose. Okay. Friends, it's just like, okay, Louis Vuitton. Oh, we've made $5 billion from selling handbags today. I know what we'll do. Let's go start making hammers. Let's go sell heart pacemakers because they're like probably feel guilty. They're like, oh, we have made all this money. We, let's go do something for society. No, no, no. Once you start doing that, you'll lose to your competition. Now, baby dolls, we're going to speak about AI, bugs, and Roca Negra. Uh, firstly, about AI, <sighs> this makes you really, really, really uncomfortable, but I just, if I had to see it, you have to see it. Has AI gone too far? Has it gone too far? Man, this is it's, it's pretty freaking scary because uh, I've seen a picture when my mom was like 17 and this kind of like, obviously, top part, you know, it's black and white. Just top part. I'm like, ugh, man. Ugh, it just make me feel. It's making me feel weird. You're doing weird stuff. AI, come on, man. It's, there's no friends. You gotta understand. It's it's better than Photoshop. There's no blurring around. It's like you got a professional to do that. Okay, so ah, uh, I guess you know AI, man. What are they gonna start doing next? Putting like, oh, they're already doing this. You know, friends. It's people putting uh, other girls' faces on like adult films. Okay, they're already doing that. So what's next? Your friend saw me in a bull hat on like a hot babe. I don't want to watch that. But I know one of you is going to do it and present it my way. I know that. You just keep doing that. I will not eat the bugs. So this is, friends, just showing you we're on the right path. Okay. So we're going to end with this bug part. Roca Negra today 
and Microsoft will launch a $30 billion artificial intelligence fund for investing. So obviously you have their logos here and you have Lizard Fink. Okay, so what's actually going on here? Well, I've explained, okay, friends, the very obvious and very clear long-term plan of Roca Negra, who are the de facto private wallet of the US government, but it's like, wink, wink, we're not allowed to tell you that, but they are. We know from all the leaks. We know from that little Surge weirdo guy, you know, the twink-looking guy who leaked, his, he spoke to the reporter, that that chick, and then we ended up finding out with Roca Negra. I remember we covered it, friends, um, the, the, where he basically just revealed what Roca Negra is. Just keep accumulating forever, accumulate infinite power, they control everything, etc. Okay, so their ultimate, ultimate goal is to get this ESG index price to go up. Now, ESG index, friends, is, and I, I hate to say negative things about dogs, but ESG indexes are dog shit, okay? They're, they're actually dog shit, okay? Look look at this, by the way, MSCI, ESG index, uh, look at this. In that year, only went up like 4%, okay? But the stock market was up like double. And you can even see what's in it, right? So you have like environmental, social, governance and economics, human capital development, but environmental policy and management systems. So, oh, policy influence. Wow. Higher exchange to company, higher exposure to companies that publicly disclose their monetary contributions for political campaigns, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's really, really bad. So this index, it's dog shit. So what they've been doing over time is... They're looking for ways to boost this ESG index because if you look at green and ESG companies, friends, it's it's trash. It's anti-capitalism. Like, if, friends, if you've got a company, I don't want to hire 14 fat pink-haired chicks to work in this office. I'm sorry. It's all shit at your job. I want the little Asian kid. I want 14 of them. I don't want you 14. See what I mean, friends? And if I have a hairdresser store, I don't want to hire some like immigrant dude, right? With like a mustache. You can't cut hair, man. Get the chicks in. See what I mean? So obviously on a grander scale, this like impacts profitability of companies. Elon Musk, friends, which is funny, building like literally electric cars. He has a low ESG rating. Why? I think he didn't hire enough like women or something somewhere. Okay, so just showing you how they use it for total control. Now, the ESG index is dog shit. So if they want to control people, they have to be able to sell the product to people. Why? Because they, so here's the thing. They, see, Rock and Rock and controls everybody's wallet, but they can only market to you. They can't tell you, go and buy this ESG. That's obviously totalitarian stuff, right? So what they have to do is they have to like psyops you and tell you that this thing is better because of reasons A, A, B, C. Now they tell you ESG is better because these are green companies and there's 14 fat blue head chicks and everyone's kids are on hormone blockers. They're chopping off their generals. Sweet. And everyone's celebrating. Okay. You have those freaks over there and they're sitting there in the corner, but money talks. Money talks hard. So the, the index is underperforming S&P 500. So people will say, well... I like ESG because they're brainwashed and they say, well, you know, but your returns are dog shit. So I'm not going to like accept a way low return just to like support this stuff. So what's Rock and Negra going to do? Obviously what they're going to do, they are doing right now. In comes Bitcoin. In comes AI. The new things. So now Rock and Negra, it's going to get Bitcoin into that ESG index somewhere. It probably get a company, whatever it is. The long term, they're trying to do something like that, okay? Because here's the thing: Roca Negra control the flows of money. They control the friends like Roca Negra, Vanguard, and whoever the hell else it is. Uh, they own like what eighty eight percent. So everything goes through them. They literally control the taps. Now, when you sign up your money there, they make the rules on the index, right? In terms of like they have their own little conditions of the policy. So. If you're a top 500 company, the S&P 500, you get like automatic DCA flows because everyone wants to buy a top 500, right? But if you're outside of the top 500, if they kick you out of the index, you're basically dead. You don't get the automatic DCA money, which is like everyone's retirement money who's like weekly wages and stuff coming in. So we've got a problem though, right? That ESG, right? The S part is social. This is the ultimate, this is the power control because energy and carbon, they can always fudge the numbers, but 
there, there's some mathematical basis to that. Oh, you're doing this many carbon credits. This is how we move. But the the S part, that is the dangerous part because S just stands for social. Because like, friends, if you, let's say you didn't like my video, I'm like, oh, you're affecting my mental health. I've got to now put you in jail because you're a mental health crisis yourself, okay? You're causing everybody mental health issues. It's harmful. You see what I mean? We're taking a slippery, slippery slope. So um, very, very obvious, right? If you don't have enough hormone blockers or you didn't vote for the right political party, they can give you just a 10 out of 100 rating, okay? That's what it is. That's what they can eventually, easy, easy. But they first need to get people in there. So that's why when they introduce AI like they are now, okay, they have, they're teaming up with Microsoft, right? So they're getting into these new things because they want to be a part of these. They get the companies on lockdown and Bitcoin, the Bitcoin mining and all these other stuff. Now they can put in their index. Now suddenly they'll have an index that goes up. So once you have something that goes up, they're basically just constructing it over time, right? Because they've got infinite time frames. They're a bunch of bug eaters. They don't age like normal humans. Eventually, this thing is going up like the S&P 500. Then they can start marketing to people, ESG, 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 and there you go. Everybody is now trapped later on because, oh, they're coming here for the gains, but they don't actually know what they're signing up for. You know, there have already been reports, friends, where Rocco Negra, have, they've gone to certain companies, and this is not, not conspiracy. It's really happened, right? Being reported. They'll go to certain companies, and um, because you haven't hired enough females, you haven't done enough this or done enough, done enough that you're too, they're not on the right political side, whatever the hell they want. Yeah, they uh, they they put they put your rating low enough so that you're not in the index anymore. So you don't get the you don't get the automatic cash flow money. So if you're a CEO, what are you gonna do? Your stock price doesn't get the automatic flow of money. They're literally the gatekeepers. You see. Now, of course, you know, in Pulse Chain community, know what it's like to have these gatekeepers out here. But, man, once you get a taste of that money and then it gets taken out, what's going to happen, man? Your stock price goes down, not enough attention. You see the issue that comes on. So ultimately, right, Bitcoin being added to that ESG index, the ESOI index, would help make the ROI on it do better on the chart so it attracts more people into their vacuum black hole and AI as well. So AI, remember, friends, because they're going to curate everything and filter everything. You already know Google does as well. Also, shout out to Dan Dog Crypto. Anyone who says collateralizing Bitcoin by our most trusted financial institution to create a guaranteed yield by the banks is part of the legacy system. This is not decentralized. That centralized control, that's Michael Saylor, true. Yes, yes, yes. He's talking about that's not real default. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. That is 100% true what he's saying. So now you get to see where it's all going. It's just that it's happening year by year, like quarter by quarter, even slower than that, right? because they're, they're always super, super long-term friends. They're not having proper humans. There's some control going on there. So they that's why they want your bags. They want your bit. That's why it really is true. They they want to they want to buy and own Bitcoin. They want to have Ethereum. They want to have access to all these. So they can throw it in here and then slowly. That's what they do, man. They I mean, they got the money printer, man. They have access to everyone's money, so they can slowly come in. That's why you also know, right? Uh, the government is incentivized to make stocks go up over time. If stocks go down, no one's listing. It's turmoil. You see, so they're always going to do whatever they can to make sure the stock Ponzi go up. As we saw in the great, uh, the zombie virus in 2020, we did have a great depression. You lost 50% of your purchasing power, but you didn't lose half your income. It's just that the cost of food and bananas and everything doubled. You see that? So now you're half as poor. Look, look what's happening. We are half as poor, but we're still half as rich. No, five times as rich. Why? We have our friendship. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, all. Catch you in the next one.